How is it possible that a 2050 rated player beats a 1750 rated player 34 times in a row? Statistically, that's a 0.44% chance of that happening. Or in other words, very interesting. Now many of you think this player is definitely cheating and should undergo the procedure. But first, let me show you how I calculated the probability. Just a quick disclaimer, I'm not a professional mathematician, I'm just a ChatGPT mathematician, so don't take anything for granted, but I think what I'm about to show you is accurate. Um, so I'm gonna use this equation, we will be calculating the percentage of, so basically the chance of win. Um, and what you're gonna do is you input your rating in the second place and your opponent's rating in the first place. So in my case, it's 2054 and the opponent is 1749, right? Um, and the best thing is probably to just use Pho Photomat, uh, the app on your phone, and you just input the equation in and you get the result. So in my case, it's 85%. So that means that there is an 85% chance of me winning against a 305 points lower rated opponent, right? Um, so this is the, the number, the, the, so which is 85%, right? Um, and you can do this for yourself, just input your rating and if you want to calculate for any opponent, right? And it's always going to be the same. If the rating is, in my case, the difference here is 305, the, the difference between these two ratings. Um, and if you input, let's say, 1054 versus 749, it's going to be the same win percentage, right? For streaks, you're just gonna take this number and raise it to the power of whatever the streak you want to calculate for. So basically, in my case, it's 34. So you just write 34 and then you can just use a normal calculator um, and just input as many decibel numbers as you can, just so that the result is more accurate, right? Um, so in my case, it came out as 0.044 which is 0.44%, right? So this is the probability of a 2054 rated player playing against a 1749 rated player and winning 34 times in a row, right? As you saw from the equation, the chance of this streak happening is really, really low. But there is one factor that this equation cannot calculate, and that is emotions. We are humans, we're not robots, right? And when you lose a lot of games, you start tilting, right? And the, the level of your play drops, usually, and also you start playing more recklessly, you want to win, right? So you, you just play more aggressively. And that's exactly what happened here. Let's look at some examples. Um, let's look at this game. This one was a Italian opening um, and as you can see it started out as, as a normal game. Uh, I mean yes I am two pawns up from the opening, you're, you're one pawn up uh, if you play correctly but he hung another pawn. Um, and then you can see this is a weird move, let's say bishop to g5, right? Bishop to g5 and then he trades the bishop, right? Like, if you ask, ask yourself, would an 1800 rated player, or 1750 in this case, move the bishop for one square and then trade for my undeveloped bishop, right? It doesn't make sense. And this is just because he was tilted, right? Um, just wasting two moves for nothing, right? And it also improves my rook. So, just a bad move. And then he just tried to checkmate me. He uh, he hangs another pawn and obviously he, he would have to trade, but he doesn't, he hangs the rook because he's trying to, I don't know, get my queen away and then get some kind of checkmate, right? Uh, but I mean, obviously it's not gonna work, right? I just trade rooks and that's it. So this is an example of him 
already being tilted, playing suboptimal moves, playing moves that he's he wouldn't normally play, right? And then he just wants to be aggressive and uh, wants to win somehow, but it's obviously not gonna happen. Now, obviously, all of the games weren't so clean. Uh, I was also struggle struggling in some, uh, for example, this one. Uh, I played the hip opening and then I let him get his pawn to h5. Um, so here I should have played h5, I played too quickly, right? Because I wasn't expecting, again, he just basically pre-moved h4, h5, right? So I should have played h5. He probably would still go um, g4, which is a nice move. But then at least I can take and get my rook here, for example, right? Um, but yeah, I allow the pawn to get to h5. And now it's bad, right? Because the queen is getting in. Um, here, I guess... Okay, knight takes was maybe better. And then king f6, okay. Um, but I just wanted to, to keep my pawns connected. And then I get the rook to a defensive position and it seems like I'm holding, right? I get the fork, but then obviously, I mean, my king is in the center, <laughs> like what are you gonna expect, right? Uh, he gets this nice sack, obviously, if I take, he takes my rook. So I just move, just trying to... I mean, yes, this would be the best move, but... Okay, yeah, he takes the rook. Um, but there is a problem, right? The knight is controlling the square, so maybe if I push and then somehow try to run, but yeah, this is lost. Um, so I just... I just made moves quickly, right, trying uh, to to make him nervous so he would blunder. And this is exactly what happened. I go here, he goes check. And it's a free queen. And it's still not over. You can see that based on the engine, he's still better. Uh, but it's soon gonna... I'm soon gonna be... I'm soon gonna convert, right? Uh, so I just run my king. And height on a6 and that's it right now obviously i have a queen here i again ah because yeah he can block no but still i go check f4 tempo on the queen tempo on the rook f4 nice move um but yeah he doesn't find f4 and then he again i didn't even know this he had mate wow because the knight is controlling the squares and again like if it was okay, he had eight seconds, but still, I mean, it's possible. 1700, completely reasonable that he sees this mate, right? But he didn't. Um, and now I, but he, he instead gives my, he gives the rook for free, right? Um, and yeah, then he just hangs the knight, and that's it. Now you might be wondering, is is this an actual 1750 rated player, or is this just someone who's overrated, right? Uh, but no, this is an actual 1700, you can see if I go to his profile, let's say Blitz, you can see he has, he has a lot of games, 40,000, right? And I think, how much? Um, all time, so 20,000 of them are rated, right? So, and you can see the, the graph, the progression, it's going up, right? So this is an actual 1700. Now let's imagine for a second that I won 16 more games. I don't think that's a crazy thing to say, right? I mean, the opponent was already tilted. If he didn't quit and played more, I think there is a high chance I would get a 50 game streak against him, right? Now let's just calculate what the probability of a 50 game streak is. Um, so that's 0.03% or in other words, uh, one in, one in 2,890. So before it was zero point, so for 34 streak, it's 0 0.44% or one in 227. That's if we play 34 games. 227 times, then one time I win all 34. Meaning we need to play 34 times 227, we need to play, let's say, 8,000 games, right? Now, in the case of 50, we need to play, let's say, almost 150,000 games. 
because I would win one time if we played 3,000 times, almost 3,000 times. If we play 3,000 times 50 games, then one time I win all 50. So we would have to play almost 150,000 games. Do you know how much that is, right? So this is where statistics get ridiculous, right? Because it also doesn't include if you're having a bad day. That doesn't mean anything to the, to the equation, right? The equation just calculates the rating. It doesn't know if you didn't sleep all night, if, uh, I don't know, you're having a bad day, right? It doesn't include that. Now, why am I even talking about this? Well, let's look at Hikaru, for example. So, on his profile, you can see he played 58,000 games. And I believe he got a 50 streak before, right? So, Hikaru <laughs> currently rated 3,270 in Blitz. That means if he got uh, a 34 streak against a 2009, uh, against 2,965 rated player, then that would be the same 0.44 chance like I had, right? And that's not as crazy because that's, let's say, 1 in 8,000 chance. So, 8,000, uh, uh, I mean, 1 in 227 chance, meaning he would have to play about 8,000 games, which obviously he has, right? That's not a, a crazy number. But... I believe he got a 50 or more streak before against 2,900 rated players, which means he would have to play like 150,000 games, which he obviously didn't. Now we might say, okay, but 0.03% or 1 in almost 3,000, that's just on average how often this event should happen. So it could happen before 150,000 games. And yes, that's true. But keep in mind that Hikaru got this trick multiple times, right? So that's why in statistical sense, he's an outlier. And this is why statistics in chess is just not applicable, right? Because there is so many factors that differentiate humans and robots, right? If there was a robot with the rating, and another robot with, uh, let's say, the Hikaru's rating, and they played, then yes, probably it would match the uh, statistics, right? But when we're talking about humans, there is just no point in calculating probability because it's always going to be different, right? It's always going to be different. Uh, one guy is going to have a, a good day, for example, and he plays like a, in Hikaru's case, let's say, like a 3500 then how are you going to include that in the equation? You can't, right? And also one guy might get tilted and he plays instead of like a 2,900, he plays like a 2,500, right? So that's why calculating probability in chess is just useless.